but yeah, I'm uh, in my 22nd year in the industry. Um, our firm focuses on, on a holistic full service financial planning. Um, we've been risk alized users for approximately four years now and asset map for nearly three years. Um, they have become the core uh, technology um, support for our firm. Um, we use them um, both in discovery and in client reviews. Um, we use them extensively. We use them every day. Um, virtually every meeting that we're in, we're either using one or the other, and in most cases, we're using both at the same time. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of my background. That sounds great. Um, Matt, are you there? Do you want to start off with, so I know we both have some questions that we can um, talk yep. to Shane about. Do you want to kick off with kind of your take on his use of Riskalyze and then we'll go from there? Yeah. Um, sorry, I did a classic 2020 blunder and I was on mute. Um, <laughs> That's okay. This isn't that formal. <laughs> so, yeah, Shane, so do you start with the asset map with prospects and clients or do you start with Riskalyze? So what I would say is in our discovery process, um, we do start with asset map. And much to Adam's uh, points um, in his training, uh, we, ha we have learned that the best practice is, is to start discovery with the client. Um, I think clients are a lot more forthcoming when they're involved in help building the map. Um, and we've noticed um, that they really gravitate towards the map um their eyes kind of light up and when they can see their entire financial picture in front of them on a single screenshot or on a single sheet of paper um, they get really excited um, so we start with that um, and then we typically jump over to uh, risk allies to do risk assessments yeah and i believe you said you you're a big fan of using the simple questionnaire um, yes sir walking through that with their clients to find their risk number. Um, and what's that process usually like uh, for, for the client or the prospect? So like I said, normally we're gonna start by building out a map and then we're gonna go into risk allies and basically explain to them what the software does. And in some cases, I'll even uh, show them some of the, the methodology, et cetera. Um, but we want them comfortable knowing why we're asking the questions we're asking. So once we go into um, a sample portfolio to explain to them how what the risk number is, where the software is getting data, we just jump right in to um, getting a risk number with a simple push of a button. Um, we would add a questionnaire. Uh, type in their names, et cetera, how much money we're dealing with. And we, we do like the simple questionnaire. Um, so we just walked in through those series of questions to get their risk number. Um, and once that is done, um, we will typically um, jump back over to the map in some cases, but obviously we wouldn't have their investment portfolios in here yet so we would not have integrated yet to get um, risk numbers into the system okay and, and what's the experience like when you move on to uh importing what their current portfolio is yeah so after that discovery meeting in a follow-up meeting we're going to come back and start with the asset map again so we're, we're going to come in and um, start having conversations, strengths and weaknesses in their portfolios. Um, as we describe to them, all the different incomes, retirement accounts, uh, brokerage accounts, et cetera, insurance protections and the like. Um, as we go through that, um, something that we've learned is the, they start looking at what is this risk number? Um, and you can tell that they're kind of starting to focus on these because it's a distraction as we're going through here. So when we're done with the uh, the presentation of the map to basically show them their current financial situation, oftentimes we get asked that, which is a great segue for us to come into Risk Allies um, and start having a conversation about their portfolios. Um, this has been really helpful for us in doing uh, portfolio analysis 
um, as far as, um, especially with a prospective client, um, because it, it helps us know whether or not they're in, they're in good portfolios now and what opportunities we might have to uh, start managing additional dollars. So this is just a sample that we created yesterday, um, various accounts on a household. Obviously you can see very different risk numbers amongst them. And a lot of that just helps drive conversation. Um, that's one of our favorite things to say about the asset map. The asset map drives conversation. So when we can come in and talk about their, their risk assessment number versus their current portfolio construction and where their different assets are at, you can immediately see on a single sheet of paper or a single screenshot um, where things already need to be repositioned. Um, and it makes it very obvious to a current or prospective client. Yeah, it's beautiful just how simple and visual it is. It's just, it's so translational. People understand the speed limit sign for the risk numbers and the visualization of the asset map. Um, do you have any specific uh, testimonials or stories you want to share um, about taking clients through this process or, or prospects or anything of that like? Yeah. Um, one that I would, uh, that comes to mind immediately, we have a, a physician that owns several businesses as well and, and properties. So, um, kind of to Allison's introduction where she was showing, um, other entities, um, you know, the thing I've learned about physicians, they're extremely busy and extremely unorganized. Um, so when you start building out maps for somebody that has a really sophisticated situation, um, it really brings the pieces together for them. Um, you can see here, I even created a, a little entity for this household. Um, but um, it's very enlightening for them and it helps them stay organized, I guess I'd say. Um, and, and with that in mind too, um, we have found that the asset map's actually a, a good tool uh, to work with centers of influence, um, in particular um, CPAs. And so where you're working with the more sophisticated client that has a lot of business structures and things going on, um, it actually becomes a pretty good tool for the CPA to, to stay organized and uh, see everything uh, on, on a single sheet of paper as well. Oh, that's really interesting. And I love this view. This is a view um, that I haven't really seen so much uh, of showing not only just one particular client uh, who might be a business owner, the business itself in kind of the second view and the risk scores associated. I mean, you could have three or four really effective conversations right here with this screen up. And that's just incredible, in my opinion. Yes, like I said, it drives conversation. Um, when you do, when you put business entities in there, of course, you open up the door to to so much more than just working with the individual. Sure. It even leads to conversations like, "What is your exit strategy from your business?" And as you know, most business owners don't have an exit strategy, um, so it does help you in in further planning for the client that they're probably not getting from an existing advisor. Very interesting. You know, and that's something we hear pretty frequently too is, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways and focuses that you can use the asset map. All advisors tend to have their expertise, their niches. And, um, you know, we hear a lot of times as an example, you know, maybe I'm an advisor who uh, does a lot of asset management. I'm not, you know, um, the most comfortable around the insurance conversation. Uh, we've heard so many times that uh, talking about business exit strategies or even just life insurance in general, if that's not maybe your forte, uh, it makes the conversation flow a lot more simply. It, it feels more natural because you have something visual to reference. And um, I think that's a really good point uh, as far as just what you have showing at the moment and what your topic might be for that meeting. Very good stuff. Absolutely. Shane, I have a question for you. Um, sure. Because this is so such a simplistic and holistic view, uh, what are your experiences in discovering 
all the way assets with current customers or maybe even new prospects who started with you know a retirement account and a brokerage account but then when you open up the asset map um they're able to to really just open up so many other things that that previously you would have maybe not discovered yeah that that's very true um like i said when when clients help build the map they're more more forthcoming a great example is just last week um we were working with a prospective client and her husband her husband's a ceo of a hospital and you know a lot of times the spouse is real guarded and he was very guarded about his finances but very open about hers um, once he saw us constructing the map he got to participate and he really opened up and started divulging information about his own uh, um, accounts and portfolios and and, and whatnot and um, there's different reasons for that for different people um, I have found that a lot of people that are guarded are usually the ones that think that they're in a really good financial situation and and maybe they know more than you um, and so it's it's almost like an ego thing for them to be able to say oh well I've got this very large 401k plan over here or this very large insurance policy etc um, so they like the participation which to me once you get it on the map now it's much more easy to get a statement from them to come back in to risk allies and be able to do a portfolio analysis for them um, in your next meeting that they probably weren't expecting. And so just by getting that statement and running the analysis opens up the door to move assets if obviously if they weren't in, a, in an efficient place. That's so cool to hear. One thing we haven't touched on yet is the retirement map tool in risk allies. Yeah. Um, how is that? really help um just from a from one graph uh, help set expectations for the long term yeah so matt as you know when you do a a uh, current portfolio and a proposed portfolio um we typically then um after we've explained to them where they're at what the benefits are of potentially moving assets um then we kind of use the map to explain to them why is this important um, why is it more important to increase your dividend yield and lower your expenses how is that beneficial to you and i think the map helps solidify that or, or tie that back together so this is the current uh current portfolio in this um, example i know you didn't don't get to do a full demo on this but just for those that don't use risk allies um you're going to input birth years, life expectancies, uh, inflation rates, et cetera, investment amount, what year they plan to retire, um, and then how much money they need to, to meet budget. So in this example, on the current portfolio, as you can see, it's not the nice green color that we like to see on a retirement map. There's a, a slim possibility that this person could have failure in retirement and not meet their obligations um and the thing that's really nice about the retirement map is it gives you the solves so for this person it says instead of withdrawing 4500 a month you should only withdraw 4000 it immediately tells you how that affects you um or you need to save 2800 dollars more per month between now and your retirement date you didn't have to go into any other software to determine that the retirement map did it for you immediately but where this gives me uh, confirmation that what I'm advising them to do as far as the investment management, I just simply come in and compare this to my proposal, keeping the same risk profile. Actually, I lowered the risk profile by seven points, um, but I increased their probability because we designed a more efficient portfolio for them. So in essence, what this did it gave the retiree $500 more per month plus inflation for the rest of their lives and pushed their probability or likelihood of being able to do that all the way up to 94%. And we left a larger estate to their kids. So this is just more of a confirmation that what we were teaching them before in the, in the portfolio comparisons, that it's going to help them accomplish their goal. That's great. And I think the true power of it is it's, 
it's translatable and it's visual. And I think that's the common trend between and among the two pieces of software we're talking about today. Uh, the, the final thing I'd like to uh, talk about um, before we turn it back over to Allison and then get into Q&A, we've got a bunch of great questions coming in, which is awesome to see. Um, I think both tools, the, the end message is that it really helps level set client expectations. And over the last years, um, everything has been, I don't want to say an easy street for financial advisors, but everything has been trending upward into the right. And then as we headed into, you know, the third and fourth months of 2020, it, VIX index shot way up and volatility became very real, very quick. Uh, so Shane, I'd like to just have you tell us a little bit about what those months were like. I know you said you guys, um, you have over 800 households, I believe, that you guys manage. What was that like when the market volatility hit? Uh, I got to imagine, were people freaking out and calling all the time, or was it business as usual? No. So for us, um, surprising to many, it was business as usual. Um, with somewhere around 875 households, um, you know, these two tools allow you, one, to educate and two, to remind people what financial position they're actually in. So that's where the asset map has played a big uh, role, especially this year, is reminding clients that if your portfolio lost 15%, how did it really affect you? And in most, in many cases, it didn't, right? Um, so for us, um, being educational up front and utilizing these tools religiously through all of our client uh, reviews and all of our meetings. Out of um, 875 households, we heard from less than five. Um, we had less than five households that were very concerned about their financial position. Um, so obviously we were much more proactive and reached out to others, but we didn't have the panic and the fear. And out of all of those households, not a single client sold out of the market. That's, that's amazing. Incredible. And that's just a testament to the platforms. Um, they work um, and the, the visual um, part of it is just a great reminder. And the one thing I would say in, in 2020, um, I don't know of two better tools to use from a remote um, learning situation. Um, they they work very well and complement each other very well in a, in a virtual meeting. Um, so coincidentally, we've always used these tools. And when this hit and we, we chose to go virtual, it was just natural to keep using these because our clients were used to it and they're very easy to use um, remotely.